Right. So this is the this is the nasty one that we, we talk. This is in Pitigo. Right. And this is this is again a staph skin infection, but this is the one that's particularly infectious. And this is the one that spreads like wildfire in institutions like schools and gyms, for example, because close to contact with the skin uh, can spread that bacteria from one person to the to the other. And the, we can there's impetigo is characterized by this kind of honey golden crust that forms on the skin. That's the aureus bit of the staph aureus. And you can get this version called bullus impetigo where these big blisters form. And often that those blisters pop and it releases all this fluid and it's just a bit wet and manky. Um, and yeah, I would definitely advise getting this treated with antibiotics. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not getting that treated, you've got something wrong with yeah. you, haven't you? <laughs> Jesus. We tend to, in, in general practice, I you see this a lot in children around the mouth. You don't tend to see it in adults unless they're training something like BJJ where they're in close contact with each other. Yeah. Um, so it's actually relatively uncommon in the general adult population, yeah. apart from you, you know your, your, your audience who yeah. will see this a fair bit. So this is already quite interesting because I always thought that um, staph infection was one thing and impetigo was something different. Yeah. yeah so what you're saying is, is impetigo is a type of staph infection. Yeah. Well, and what we'll learn about skin infections is that certain uh, organisms, certain bacteria, virus or, or viruses or fungi will present in different ways and they'll look different depending on the, the, the body part that they're in, infecting. Um, and that, that is one of the big challenges of skin disease is, is interpreting what you're, what you're seeing. You're just seeing one bit of manky skin can look very similar to the other, but what's going on underneath the surface can, can be very different and the treatment required and the approach can be very yeah. different. Yeah. Okay. Um, once we've gone through the different pictures and, um, conditions, we're, we're going to do a bit of a summary in regard to what gyms and athletes can do, but it might be quite good. I think as we work through just to talk about, um, I guess like sort of time off the mats and, and return to play and that type of thing for each specific condition. So it feels like staff infection is a bit of an umbrella term. Um, so the untrained jujitsu practitioner isn't going to know the difference between a contagious impetigo and a not contagious maybe a stein perhaps because it's in the eye, but one of the less concerning ones. So what's the advice for, for somebody doing jiu-jitsu or wrestling or MMA or any, you know, rugby, whatever, um, who identifies this on the skin? Um, we, we, we've talked on a couple of occasions and you know better than anybody in regard to getting a GP appointment. Sometimes it's difficult. So is the advice that they, they spend a period of time off the mats? What would you suggest? Yeah, I think the first part of this is recognition, is knowing that there's a, a skin infection there not just for the coaches but for the um the members of that of that gym so they're aware of what to look out for and that there's not so much stigma that they're not able to kind of disclose that um and that's why kind of education pieces like this i think are really useful and what you know for impetigo we're looking at these kind of crusted painful red bumps on the skin with a bit of background redness and maybe some open sores where there's a bit of fluid coming out if you have anything like that always think could this be impetigo particularly if you've then got that like honey golden crust it's disgusting isn't it <laughs> <laughs> in which case if it's a localized area so a small cluster of these little bumps you could get antibiotic cream that normally sorts it out within a week just twice a day antibiotic cream if it's a more uh, it, a, a wider area then you might need antibiotics by mouth flu cloxacillin is the one we commonly use and once the you've had good say two to three days of antibiotics and those crusts of they're not wet they've started to heal over you're unlikely to still be infectious so i the, the key really is it needs to be resolving um, and they need to have been on s s antibiotics for at least two to three days before they can then return to play. All right, perfect. Yeah, so that's that's a lot better than I thought. I thought it was going to be a couple of weeks, to be fair. So that's... Yeah, that's way better. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And I think some of the issues is... So we, we talked about this a bit offline, and, and you'll agree. There's a couple of things that happen in the gym space, right? So people get really obsessive about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and the, the worry that they take, you know, even you know a few days, let alone a few weeks off the map, you know, could be devastating with some people. And then people use it for different reasons. So obviously there's a skill acquisition that people worry they'll fall behind on if they're not, you know, sort of consistent. But equally, some people use it for mental health. Um, so I think what happens is people will get something like this yeah. and they'll think, shit, I don't want to be off the mat for a couple of weeks and they'll conceal it or they'll, they'll 
not tell people and i think that's where it tends to spread a little bit there's that and then of course there's just the genuine people don't know what it is and hopefully we're solving that problem today but i think that offers some reassurance that if people are taking a couple of days off the mats they can sit on the side of the mats watch but don't get on the mats for a couple of days once you've been on the antibiotics and then once it starts healing and resolving then you're pretty much good to go i think it's really important as well to get go and see a gp or go and see someone and get some antibiotics because a lot of people just leave it don't they you know they just leave it maybe put some cream on it you know and yeah. then and hope for the best really you know? yeah yeah and these and are treatable infections they generally respond quite quickly can they can, yeah. just a quick one can they if you was to put say um like a cream on it i don't know like an antifungal cream um so this is a bacterial infection. yeah yeah i know but pe- what i'm saying is that from from what people say in the gym yeah. they probably see this not know it's a bacterial infection thinking it's a fungal infection mm. put a fungal cream on it or whatever and maybe i don't know does it does this sort of stuff does it get can it come can it get better look better at times and then flare back up is that a thing or does it that's because what i was thinking is oh you got you got like a little rash it may not be as extreme as this um you think it's a bit of impetite or whatever it is you put some cream on it 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 calms down maybe and then they go back on the mats and then it flares back up and then they've give it to five people it would could that happen could it flare can it flare up yeah and go it down could, if, especially if, if you, you under treated it so you only yeah. gave yourself a couple of days of antibiotics so you kept missing doses you know, people aren't always that good at taking yeah. their medicine uh, even when it's prescribed then yet yeah, in theory it could if you haven't adequately treated it it could come back and bite you yeah. again equally in real life even if you took this to a gp that it it never presents like the textbooks you get lots of I see lots of manky bits of skin that isn't quite clear cut. You're thinking, is this fungal? Is this bacterial? Is it maybe viral? You're not quite sure. You have to hedge a little bit. So that someone might start you on an antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial with a view to then following you up. And if it hasn't responded, they might try something different. So there is a bit of trial and error here. Then you might not necessarily be put on the right treatment first time if it's got a few borderline features and it isn't quite a typical presentation of that thing. But I'm not encouraging your audience to necessarily self-diagnose and say, I need to be able to spot what's what's fungal, what's bacterial, what's viral. But just to recognize when this could be something that's not just going to affect your own health, but also the health of the well-being of other yeah, people in the, yeah, the facility you train at. Last question, and we'll probably move on, I think. But I've had some form of staff previously on a couple of occasions. And when I had it, sometimes I know it breaks out on my chin a little bit. And I always get like a swelling. So I think it's my, is it your glands or your lymph lymph nodes? In your neck, yeah. Um, And sometimes I can feel quite unwell with it as well. So with bacterial infections, sort of the, the bad, the, you know, the sort of worst ones, is that typically something you'd expect as well? Would somebody stop feeling a bit under the weather or is it just the skin thing? Yeah, sometimes that's possible, and particularly under the chin there, Paul. It, we, we've got lots of hair follicles, mm-hmm. Slee, and, and that's where you probably had a bit of folliculitis, that condition we talked about earlier. Yeah. And that infection under the skin, uh, your body drains that infection to the lymph nodes, which sit under your chin there, and, and they'll might get get more painful and inflamed that's very common it's not uncommon either to feel a bit uh, a bit under the weather but if you get really feverish and you you're very unwell you're not eating or drinking there is always possible to get more serious infection things like sepsis i say that's uncommon with skin infections but it, it can still happen so if, if you are if you're if you are systemically unwell with any of this then definitely do see your gp or health provider <laughs> 